Did the Ravens trade for Patriots wide receiver Nikhil Harry? What the Ravens need the most from their wide receivers and how they actually might have already gotten it. These and many more for NFL question for subscribers. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out in Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we got a special episode of NFL questions from subscribers because we have a very special guest. Now, what questions from subscribers is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want the opportunity to possibly be part of NFL questions from subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And we'll answer your question in a video just like this. But without further ado, let's introduce our special guest for this Today's episode. episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. Uh, we are joined by Sonny from SCG Sports. Now, first, before we get into it, what made you start doing YouTube? It was random. It was one day I was like, man, I guess because I love talking about sports, been talking about sports all my life. I be, I remember being in Puerto Rico and my friends used to be like, man, you sound like you should be in ESPN, like like a Spanish version of ESPN, ESPN Espanol. Uh, and I was like, oh man, I, I, I just love it. And then one literally ran this, like, took my phone and do a video. If you go to my channel, the first couple of videos are very cringy. Uh, but it was That's behind, yeah, it was behind a couch that I don't even own anymore and a Raven's towel. And I was just talking. And, and you know, you know how it is in Raven. The first couple of videos, nobody watches it. Yeah. And, and but I was like, ah, you know what? I'm just getting this stuff out of my chest. So I'm just gonna keep rolling, kept rolling, kept rolling. Then a couple of likes here, a couple of people, and I just love the interaction, to be honest. And one yeah. of the things I say in my channel all the time is like, I don't need you guys to agree with me. Just give me your honest feedback. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just love debating and sports. It's just awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah, that's true, man. So um. Where, where can they find you at the channel, the Twitter, everything? Where can they find Sonny at? So I try to make it easy. SCG Sports everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, IG, YouTube. SCG Sports. I also have a second channel. Let me plug it in. Also, AFC North Talk. Uh, yeah. My guy Quincy, my guy Ace, my guy Tony. It's almost like a civil war of very respectful civil war. Yeah. We don't, it's, not, it's not a shouting match. We do debate, and that's all good. Of all AFC North's uh, uh, teams, so Steelers, Ravens, Bengals, and Browns, it's a good way. You know, we just talk us every Tuesdays at 5:45 p.m. Eastern. It's just fun. So my channel, I do live streams at 5 p.m. Mondays, and then I throw another video currently about draft prospects, and then 5:45 p.m. Eastern on the AFC North talk. All right, cool. All right, so now y'all know who Sonny is, and we about to get into these questions because, like always. Uh, Y'all have some fire questions, so let's go ahead and get it started. Our next question came from my boy Augusto. He said, hey, team, keep it clean. First and foremost, I want to say that your videos are the best. Hope you and your family are doing amazing. Hope your week has been good so far. Appreciate it, Augusto. He said, well, I want to address a topic that nobody is talking about, the Nikhil Harry trade. The Patriots are looking forward to trade him for a fourth-round pick or two lower ones. He's a big body wide receiver who is 6'3", 6'4", 225, just what the Ravens are looking for, Miles Boykin. He hasn't blown up yet, but he showed his potential at Arizona back at college in which he recorded two seasons of 1,000 yards, and he has amazing hands as well. So my question is, should the Ravens make the move for him? In my opinion, it's a low-risk, high-reward situation since he'll put the dog attitude and make competent uh, competition in the wide receiver room, and he can be developed and help develop all others along with Sammy Watkins and our new coaches, T. Martin and Keith Williams. And the Ravens should take the opportunity. Let us know your opinion. A big hug from Mexico, bro. Keep the content up. Appreciate it, Augusto. Um, Nikhil Harry, I, I would say a no on that one. Um, if they're going to add another wide receiver, uh, I would say it needs to be through the draft or add a significant, uh, another significant free agent or somebody uh, via trade um, that has experience being the guy for their team. With Nikhil Harry, one thing that I would worry about with him is that with the Ravens, they don't have the best history when it comes to developing wide receivers. So if it's somebody that the Patriots, they took in the first round and they couldn't develop him as a wide receiver, I just, I would be kind of leery on bringing him in, uh, giving up, a, a, a giving up a, a draft pick, even though it'd be a low draft pick, 
uh, giving up a draft pick for a guy who just hasn't really panned out in the NFL yet. I feel like Ravens players, I, I get worried about them enough when they take project players from college. But if they were to take a guy that has been a project for an NFL team and this project hasn't worked so far, not to say that he can't turn his career around or whatnot, but I just don't feel like the Ravens are the team to do that. So I, I would say no for this one. I love Ankiel Harry. He was my favorite receiver coming out of that draft. The Patriots and the Ravens, I will say this, Patriots are not good either on developing wide receivers unless it's a seventh round pick that used to be a quarterback. Those still <laughs> turn into good receivers. But – Right now, Nkeel Harry is not worth a fourth-round pick. He's not. My biggest problem with Nkeel is not that he what he can be. It was the digs that he started taking at Cam Newton when he has he he has proven nothing. I think it was him or his trainer started saying, "Oh, well, I'm not playing that good because of Cam." Oh. And you know that's dude. You in theory a rookie because his first year he was basically injury. So saying that, I think in Keel, at this point, if it was a, a, a seventh or sixth conditional, make if, if he makes the team, sure, why not? Uh, we can see him in camp. If he doesn't work, just you don't lose your pick. Right. But a fourth right now, again, a guy that in love in Keel, my favorite receiver coming out of that draft, I would have to pass for a fourth because he has proven nothing. In theory, for everybody that hates Boykins, which I'm not in that camp. Miles Boykins has done more than ha the, the Harry, the Enkil Harry, right now. Right now. And they're both in their going through their third year. So that tells you a lot, right? We're not a passing offense. And still uh, Boykins, which is not also the top three receiver, has done more than him. So at this point, I'll have to do a hard pass on him. Next question came from my boy Adam. He said, uh, due to our pass rush being rebuilt, I hope Justin Houston gets signed with his experience and leadership, which we will need uh, as a mentor for the young ones we draft. Now, hopefully some free agent gets signed, even if it costs a fourth round comp pick. I like that. Uh, but we will still get a third rounder for David Culley. I don't see a wide receiver taken in the first round this year. Uh, if a player like an outside linebacker, uh, Collins from Tulsa Falls to 27, this year's draft is stacked with receivers where Eric DaCosta could wait until day two uh, or draft a, or to draft a good wide receiver like uh, Di Diami Brown uh, or Amari Rogers, which I believe will fall to the second round. Uh, I need your thoughts. Uh, a lot of fans from Raven Nation keep saying that they want uh, Bozeman moved to center, where I believe he should stay at left guard and draft a center like Creed Humphrey uh, that Lamar can build chemistry with and stick with for years to come instead of using a different center every year. I don't want to see EDC draft uh, Dickerson that a lot of analysts say is so good because he has had four season-ending injuries out of his five college seasons. Oh, really? Oh, that's scary. Yep. Uh, which, which means he's injury-prone. Uh, thanks to you, all, thanks to you uh, as we are able to stay up to date later. Appreciate that, man. Now, uh, for the second question, that reminded me of something that you said. Um, because I had heard about the Ravens that they were considering uh, moving. Uh, I think Jeff Zrebik said something about it a couple weeks ago that the Ravens were considering moving Bradley Bozeman to center. Uh, but a really good point that you had brought out uh, when, yeah, we, when we were on your channel the other day was that um, why, why hadn't they done that already, uh, given the problems that they had at center? Uh, like, and, and the fact that they even got Patrick McCarry, who had never played center before, they even had him play center before they moved Bozeman there. So um, I, I, I would be down for this if they were to draft the center or get somebody like for the future, their center, their, their guy of the future, so they don't keep flip-flopping and mismatching and all that. What about you? I agree. The center position needs to, be a, needs to stop being a question mark. It has been patched for the past couple of years and fairly successful until Skura got the yeeps. The thing with Bozeman – uh, was, look, last year coming into the offseason, we knew Skira was not going to be completely healthy. He started, but he looked, I mean, forget about the yips, he was not blocking well. So Bozeman having his career at center in Alabama, you would have thought that was the year for them to say, you know what, Skira, do you, for you to have one less thing, you and Makari battle it out for left guard, because Skira had played guard before, Bozeman, you're going to be your center. You're healthy. You're going to be your center. And that would have been – he would have been the center last year, and he would have been the center this year. Mm -hmm. The Ravens, there's something about Bozeman that they do not like about him in center. So I think we need to squash this of Bozeman in center. So saying that, 
my question with the center position is, do they like the center position that they have? Do they like Tristan Colon Castillo or do they like um, our guy Macari? Macari has played fairly well, although in the playoff he had the scurras. That's what I call it now. I call it the scurras, the best snaps. Tristan, TCC, as we call it in the Ravens Nation, um, had a really strong game against the Steelers, a really good D-line. Now, the Ravens need to know that because those two centers are like, now, I agree with the um, the question or the comment that the problem that I have with Dickerson is not his play. When I did his film violation, the dude is amazing. Yeah. But injury history is big. It's the same thing with Phillips, and I know we're going to talk about edge rushers soon. But Phillips, I have a question. He is the most polished guy, but with his injury history, I'm not ready to invest a first-round pick on that. So yeah. it's essentially a two-part. They need to evaluate is I, I, am I comfortable with Macari slash TCC, whoever wins that position? If the answer is yes, well, Macari is here for two more years. TCC is here for three. So your center position is here to grow with Lamar. If the answer is no, they should go get Creed Humphrey. Well, the, the only thing I will say is this. Uh, yes, I think Raven, you said, yes, we should burn that fourth round. And I agree. They should, and, and we ha I had an extensive conversation on Twitter between last night and today about this. And I said, look, I understand the love of the fourth round. I do, I love the draft. I I'm, I mean, I'm gonna be waking up at one in the morning to watch the draft. Nope. That's how much I like it. Okay, saying that, the Ravens have one big hole. Like receiver, we have a hole, but it's not, oh my God, we cannot, play without the receiving core we have, right? Essentially, it's basically the same as last year, sneak for, for Watkins, right? That's essentially right. what we have. Um, O-line got better because you have, um, oh my God, I'm blanking. Uh, right? Kevin Zeitler. Zeitler. We have Zeitler. You still got to have Bozeman. At this point, if you don't trade Orlando Brown Jr., you have your book and tackles coming back. And your center, at worst, you have Macari, which is the guy that you finish. So you can play with the O-line you have. But Edge, we had nothing. Yeah. So you either go to the draft and draft a bunch of guys, or this year of all the years, there's a bunch of good veteran outside linebackers that can help you. Right? Not only Edges, they're good veteran outside linebacker. And I distinguish with outside linebackers because outside linebacker, they can drop to coverage, they can set the edge, they can rush the passer. Houston can mm -hmm. do that. Kerrigan can do that. Ingram, he has injury history, but still a very inexpensive signing. The mm -hmm. reason I write all those three is because I think we should sign at least two. This edge class, in my opinion, is one of the worst that I've seen in years. It's full of potential. Potential. We know what that word means. Potential can be good. It can be bad. All, they all look amazing, size-wise, strength-wise but they all are flaw. They are all projects in my opinion. They are all at least a year away. So if you draft one of these guys and you put it behind all these veterans, maybe next year the guy can take the step in and you don't need these veterans. But right now, I don't. I cannot count on none of these guys. And Raven, I've done evaluation week after week on outside linebackers. I had none of them as a first round, none of them. I, I Every time I see an edge rush in the first round, I'm just baffled, I'm like, why? Like this dude in a, in a normal, Draft with decent edge rusher, he would not be a first round pick. But because they're all so raw, that's what they will tell you. Like, oh, but based on potential, let's put it in there. The Ravens don't need a potential because we're in a more win now mode. I want my first round pick to be ready to contribute. If it is a wide receiver, if it is an O lineman, right? I need him to be more ready. That's why I think the outside backers that are out there, Justin Houston, Absolutely. I know he left Bolton without a deal. Absolutely, they should burn a fourth round pick on him. Absolutely, no question. All right, next question came from my boy, uh, Click One. He said, uh, Engraven, watching the live stream and thought I might try to get a question read out loud by you. Oh, well, we're obviously not doing the live stream no more. So this passed. But anyway, he said, let's get into the questions. Are we still going edge rusher route in the first round of the draft if we end up getting Justin Houston? Um, I think if we would have got Justin Houston, then that, that would alleviate uh, pressure from the Ravens to take edge in the first round, but I think they still could have because if they do get Justin Houston, he's not a long-term answer. He's an answer. He will be an answer for the here and the right now. Um, but his next question is, why do some members of the flock want Terrace Marshall Jr.? 
Uh, we already know that he doesn't want to come here from that interview, which means that he'll pro he probably won't have any motivation, work ethic, or motivation. He will make himself a bust. What are your thoughts on that? Um, with that, that interview, that that clip where he said he wants to go to a team that actually passes the ball, it was in the worst way possible. It was completely taken out of context, completely. That's not what he said at all. That wasn't a shot at the Ravens at all. You got to listen to the whole thing because this happens in uh, in the media a lot. It's, it's happened to me a lot where I got caught up before and just the headline, but not the whole thing. It's happened to all of us where we see these headlines and you're like, oh, man, this dude really said that. But then when we listen to or read the whole thing or watch the whole interview or whatnot, we get to hear the entire thing. So when you listen to the entire thing, you'll be able to see that it was not a shot at the Ravens at all. That actually, I think if I'm not mistaken, he had an interview maybe two days ago, and he said that he would love to play uh, yeah, um, at Lamar. Well, Lamar, so, right. Um, I think that was two days ago. Don't, don't If I misquote the date, but whatever, he did talk about Lamar Jackson and the fact that he would love to play here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think saying that the guy will make himself a butt, that's a huge statement because I, I don't think no player comes thinking that they want to make – themselves a bust and not get paid right so they obviously want to succeed the most now let me let me uh take the question as a two part the first part i will say this there's no edge rusher even if we don't sign houston that i will take in the first round mm -hmm. even i said in the previous question that we have a big hole in edge none of them i will take marshall and i will take my favorite which is bateman before any of these edge rushers marshall is the ideal receivers the Ravens need. Bateman too, I was surprised at Bateman's size, but Bateman, when I went and watched his film, he definitely plays way bigger than he is. Like I was surprised when somebody, because I haven't watched the pro days, uh, when somebody said, oh, he measures six feet flat. I was like, really? I would have thought he was six two, six three. Yeah. Marshall plays big. Marshall makes uh, the, the contested catch, the type of catch that we need, right? There's those catch that if it's a curl route, Lamar can throw it high and the guy can just go up and get it, right? That is why people like Marshall. He is a little bit of a different mold. He's essentially what Boykins is, but coming out of college, he's way more re uh, refined than Boykins. Boykins, the problem with Boykins is Notre Dame did a disservice to him they didn't have that many route running and in the NFL, he still hasn't developed that route running tree. Marshall has, he can do an out route, he can do a post, he can do a curl, he can do in. Um, so he definitely, he plays in the slot, he plays on the outside. So a lot in 2020, he played in the slot, but if you go back to 2019, he played in the outside, which was what I think the Ravens would use him. So that's why people like Marshall, because he is a different type of receiver than what the Ravens had. He can complement Lamar perfectly. Um, so I, I think Marshall is an ideal pick in the first round. Or again, Bateman, my favorite. Uh, but either of those two receivers, I think they can complement Lamar very well. Next question uh, came from my boy, Hawk Young Jay. He said, uh, Darren Graven, hope you and the family are well. Uh, since everyone is talking about free agency and the draft, I wanted to ask a question on a different topic. Uh, so here's my question. Who do you think on this current Ravens team has the best chance to make the Ravens ring of honor? I think it's Justin Tucker uh, with Jimmy Smith and Sam Cook also having a chance. What do you think? Have a great day. And thanks for answering my question. Yes, I, I agree. One thousand percent. Justin Tucker. They ain't, won't even really need to get into it much. He's the. Oh. Best kick in the league. He done saved the Ravens from plenty of games. He done won them plenty of games that they had to rely on him. He's reliable. Um, he is just amazing at his job. So, and he's been doing it ever since his rookie year. He's been clutch ever since his rookie year. He came in as an undrafted rookie free agent from Texas in his rookie year and helped kick them to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, Justin Tucker, for sure. That, yes. yes for sure he's a lock let's be honest justin tucker's a lock uh he is he retires the next year they're probably gonna put him in the ring of honor right yeah. that's just now the thing is justin tucker still has years in this team mm. his kickers last a long time so mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lock all right next question came from my guy thomas w he said hey team keep it clean what are your thoughts on tyler huntley keep safe bud and hashtag flock gang 
Uh, with Tyler Huntley, I just feel like right now there are a lot of unknowns. Um, I was happy for him when, well, not happy for him because I didn't want him to get that opportunity, but I was happy for him that he did get his opportunity in that playoff game. I just uh, wish it would have come from the Ravens really just blowing the Bills out instead of Lamar having been hurt. Um, but I was uh, happy for him that he did get some opportunities this year. Um, and he just... He, he looked like with some more practice and some more reps that he would be pretty comfortable uh, playing quarterback. Now, I, I know that one of the biggest plays I remember from him was in the playoff game, and it hurt so bad because uh, it was on fourth down. The Ravens were down by – they weren't down by much, but he just overthrew Hollywood, and Hollywood had beat the corner. Um, and it was just – I was like, oh, man, this is still so close. But I, well, with Tyler Huntley, it's, just a, it's a lot of unknown. So I don't think I can really give a fair analysis of him because we really just haven't seen him that much. We saw him in the Bills playoff game. We saw him, I think it was the Jaguars game. That was his first game. And besides that, I think we may have seen him for a little bit, one more game maybe, but I don't even remember. But we, we haven't seen him too much, so I can't really say. So what Tyler Huntley did was he got – he told the Ravens, you don't need to draft another quarterback – at all because there's going to be an open competition between him and McSurley for the backup. And mm -hmm. if McSurley wins the competition, I think Hunley still qualifies to be a practice squad guy. Mm -hmm. And he can win it, right? I mean, Mc, I will say this, McSurley looked good when he played. He just got injured. Uh, and McSurley might start as a pop list, so he might be the de facto backup. But I like his electricity. Uh, but I think, like Raven said, if he is an unknown, and for some reason, sometimes we become in love with the unknown because we glorify more than what they are. And sometimes it's not fair to the player. Mm. Uh, but I think for him, if he becomes the backup, or even if he's a practice squad guy, learning from Lamar, even learning from McSorley, it's just great, right? Mm. But he's definitely in contention for the backup, especially yeah. McSorley, because McSorley got injured late, late in the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so if McSorley's not ready, I think he can definitely be a backup. Uh, but at worst, he is a practice squad player and definitely part of this team's plan for next year, in my opinion. Next question came from uh, Shijioki. He said, hey, Engraven, it's me. I hope you and your family are doing well. My question is, should the Ravens coaching staff, Hobbs, Giro, Keith Williams, T. Martin, go back and look at Bobby Petrino's offense the year that Lamar Jackson won the Heisman and his junior year and try to base their own passing attack off of that? Uh, I think they should. Petrino ran a pro style at Louisville, and Lamar dominated in it. Plus, since he played in it, it wouldn't be that hard for him to uh, relearn it during the offseason. Combined with figuring out what their wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs are great at in the passing game, they could create a passing game that could potentially utilize everyone at their maximum potential and potentially get them over the hump. I really want to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for taking the time to read through this. Very long email. It means a lot to me. Have a great day, uh, and stay safe. Appreciate it. Um, I think they certainly could do that. Uh, they, uh, but I, I think they should take some stuff that worked from that and they could possibly implement it in their offense. But I mean, we, we just really got to see what, um, what, what T Martin and, and Keith Williams bring to the table. Um, because I'm sure that they have their own thing, uh, that has worked. Um, uh, and again, they, they have a pretty good rep. Uh, after having worked with uh, a lot of guys in college, obviously, and, and then some significant guys in the pros, too. Um, so it just, I mean, I, I wouldn't say go back and just copy it word for word or play for play, blah, blah, blah. But you could take some things from it that worked and where Lamar had the most success and then try to implement them into the offense. Uh, because you definitely want to and I did like the part where you said really maximizing uh, these wide receiver strengths because I think that's something that it, it really needs to be done big time uh, moving forward. That's something uh, is, is something where the Ravens have really lacked that. Uh, with Hollywood, I think they definitely play him to his strengths. Uh, he's a speedster, uh, deep ball guy, um, but well, they don't really incorporate him on a slant too much. So I guess not. they don't maximize his potential, but they do do a lot with him. But um. I would just I would love to see for the Ravens to uh to really just that's the biggest thing with me. Uh it ain't even about the plays and the playbook and whatever well, it is about that. But one of the biggest things for me with these wide receivers is just playing them to their strengths, allowing them to complement each other, uh, and just really just making them the best that they could possibly be. 
Yeah, I agree. Look, taking a wrinkle here and there from Katrina, that's fine. Remember also, Lamar in the college system, you don't play top competition all the time. That's why sometimes in college, you see elevated numbers and you're like, why didn't it translate to the NFL? Hmm. The NFL, you go best of the best basically every week. Even that worst team, uh -huh. you're still taking best players in college and putting it there. When you talk about college, like you see blowouts all the time in college and it's because it's not the same level of competition so what you want when you're evaluating somebody for college you first of all one of the things i do i go and look for when they play against ranked teams right and then you want to see what are their attributes not necessarily numbers but how was that pass was that pass on point and stuff mm -hmm. like that more than oh well he threw 30 touchdowns yeah it could have been 30 touchdowns but it could have been against you know half of the teams were not even ranked right uh, i was evaluating um one of these edge rushers and he had like eight sacks seven sacks was against unranked teams i think he played three ranked teams he had one sack so numbers might not tell you the whole story in college mm -hmm. so saying that if you had to take a wrinkle here and there of things you're not doing the lamar can take advantage for sure they should do that but just bringing the whole offense no ah like you really said let them do their thing we have two new young guys ready to step up with one with the receiver, one as the passing coordinator, let them develop, let them do what they think is best with Lamar. Let's see if it works. And the last question on this episode of NFL question from subscribers came from my boy, Patrick M. He said, hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for all the great analysis and football talk. I enjoy watching your videos. Appreciate it, Pat. He said, I have a take on our wide receiver situation that I'd like to hear your thoughts on. Outside of Terrace, Terrace Marshall Jr., who I don't know is really worth the first round pick, I didn't like how off balance he looked running routes and a few questionable drops at his pro day. Lord knows we don't need another wide receiver with unsure hands with how many drops we've had lately. I see a whole lot of undersized speedsters at wide receiver potentially available at pick 27 and beyond. We're not going to get a Jalen Waddle or Jamar Chase. Uh, we've already got some smaller speedsters in Marquise Brown, Devin DuVernay, and James Prochet. Well, I don't really think James Prochet is a speedster, but he's definitely a smaller receiver. We need to look at what Deion Kane can be. And obviously, Sammy Watkins factors in. My point is that the smaller and speedy player is not a need at wide receiver for the Ravens. Uh, our true need at wide receiver is a bigger bodied guy that can be a matchup issue in the red zone and outside the numbers. I agree. Uh, let's maybe get one more big body guy like a TJ Vasher at the end of the draft and then let T Martin and Keith Williams do their thing with that room. I like that. I, I, I like that. Um, and don't forget about Benjamin Victor too. Benjamin Victor, uh, I mean, it's going to be very hard for him and, and even Deion Kane to make the roster, um, given the guys who are locks and, and even any potential guys that could be drafted. But we can't forget about them either, because I think Benjamin Victor is like 6'3", 6'4". Is he uh, still in this team? Yeah, they signed him to a future uh, deal. Okay, so he so, was... Um, so he'll, he'll have somewhat of a shot, but it's, it's going to be very, very hard. Uh, but um, I, I do like that, and I do agree that, yeah, we don't need another smaller receiver. We need a big-body guy, but not only a big-body guy, a big-body guy who is going to go and get it. And still, all, all while still hoping that Boykin could still be that. Now, again, it's all about opportunity, too. Uh, that's a big thing. Uh, but when your opportunity comes, you got to show that aggression and give – Give your quarterback a reason and give the uh, the coaches a reason to implement you. Give your quarterback a reason to continue to throw you the ball. Um, but I do uh, agree with you that – and this is only the first part of his question. We still got more to go. But I do agree with you that we do need a uh, a bigger body wide receiver. That Like that would be if, – if we get an additional receiver, then, yeah, it needs to be a guy with some good size on him. Yeah, I would say somebody that plays big. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, big body receiver, great. Uh, position receiver, essentially. But don't, don't underestimate a guy, for example, like Steve Smith. Steve Smith was, what, 5'10", maybe? Yeah. I, I don't know what he was. But think about Steve Smith and Hollywood. If they're roughly the same size, Hollywood is more of a finesse receiver. Steve Smith will go get that contact. He didn't, he didn't care if he had to run through you. He didn't care if he had to bring you down. He will get that ball. That's exactly what Antoine, uh, Antoine Bolding used to be, and Bolding also bigger receiver. But that type of receiver is essentially what you need. A guy that, think about Flacco. Q was covered. If Flacco said, I don't care, I'm just going to throw it there. Mm -hmm. And if Q is not going to catch it, 
it's gonna be an incompletion, but I'm not gonna be an interception. It's either a catch because Q's gonna fight for that ball or an incompletion. Lamar has none of that. Lamar mm -hmm. Andrews, God knows I love Andrews. That's he's not that guy either. We don't have that guy that can go there, physically snatch that ball out of the air. We don't. And that's the guy we need. Uh, is he in the draft? I'm not quite sure. Marshall could be one. I like Bateman. I think Bateman has that type of hands. But I cannot tell you right now that those guys, they one will do it. Um, but, yeah, that's the type of receiver. I agree with him. That's the type of receiver we need. Okay, cool. And next up, he said, we've all heard who Keith Williams has worked with, but I think it's worth mentioning a few names T. Martin was working with and developing while he was at USC. Robert Woods, Marquise Lee, Nelson Aguilar, and Juju Smith-Schuster. Ravens fans have been dying for a big wide receiver signing in free agency because the Ravens have proven to not be able to develop young receivers. Uh, but we hired probably the best possible coaches to fix that issue. With two coaches who have worked so well with young receivers, I have a lot of confidence in uh, what that room can accomplish this year. Devin DuVernay was great when he got the ball in his hands. Miles Boykin showed uh, he can fit into the role we need him to. Uh, Marquis started coming on more towards the end of the year. Imagine getting the most out of those guys and adding in Sammy Watkins and that that would free up coverage more for Mark Andrews. Oh, mama, the big free agency signing for the Ravens was in the coaching staff. And I think we're not giving enough credit to those hires. What do you think? I'm not opposed to getting another free agency, uh, free agent wide receiver or even drafting a couple of guys, but I think the Ravens have already addressed our biggest issue by the coaching highest. And I think our first round pick is better spent on defense with someone like uh, Zayvon Collins or even trading out for more picks in rounds two through four, where the Ravens have always found great value. Thanks if you made it this far. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. This was a good one. This was a good one. This was this was well put. And yeah, with with like we, we talked about it even before this question with uh with those two coaches. Those are very significant hires. Now we just it's it's a wait and see thing now um as to how those guys can really implement their knowledge of the game, their knowledge of really just develop the development of the wide receivers, how they can implement that uh with the Baltimore Ravens. So it is exciting uh to to have hired them. It, it is exciting knowing the guys that they have worked with, uh knowing that they do have um some good resumes. Uh, and some good ref references too, um, but yeah, now now it's just about okay. Let's let's watch these guys work. Let's watch what happens, and let's see how they get implemented into the offense. Yeah. Now, there's still the receiver question. Sammy Watkins, remember, guys, is here for one year. Mm -hmm. Not only that, Sammy Watkins tends to play maybe half of the season, mm -hmm. so you need that that guy on the other side. Would it be Boykins? It could be Boykins. But it would be better if you have another guy. And if Boykins becomes that guy, great, right? Great. But if you have another big body guy and then you have Boykins also becoming that guy, you now you know what you have now? A dangerous threat in the red zone. If you have two guys that can go get the ball at 6'3", plus Mark Andrews roaming that middle, plus maybe Hollywood on the underneath being a quicker guy in the red zone, plus the fact that Lamar can escape and just run at him, mm -hmm. Now in the red zone, you're lethal. So even if even if what the uh, the scriber is saying is true, it's getting that extra guy. You, if if that guy comes and plays well, and the other guys get elevated, amazing. You cannot have enough weapons.